Hey guys, Everything Apple Pro here. Let's take a look at iOS 14 Beta 3, released today exactly one month after the initial release of iOS 14, and quite a bit new inside. So many new icon changes, a lot of adjustments to the widgets and Apple Music, and we have this new Apple Music icon now. So all around, fantastic update. Let's get into it. First and foremost, the issue that many people were experiencing with storage has been resolved and you'll no longer get a really crammed storage section on your device for whatever reason that's been fixed. You'll also notice a lot of speed improvements and animation changes in this beta. I won't be covering all of them, but overall Apple has refined the user experience and made it a lot more fluid. So on the home screen, you'll notice that all of the icons are sitting a few pixels lower now. and. I'm kidding, obviously you won't notice that. I barely caught that one myself, but yes, Apple has lowered all the pixels and the page dots. So these bad boys now sit a number of pixels lower also. And compared to beta two here, you'll see that they do sit lower and the actual border surround is now smaller around them. And Apple has now enabled display zoom for iPhones with 5.8 inch displays. This is presumably in order to prepare iOS for the 5.4 inch iPhone. And this is what that looks like compared to stock iOS. So the widgets, apps, everything is zoomed in here. All of the system menus are slightly bigger and more condensed shaped to fit a 5.8 inch display. Also with system text size at max, you'll notice that many widgets have been adjusted to fit more information in. For example, the files widget up here, going to weather, you'll see that more information has been adjusted to fit in correctly on multiple weather widget sizes. And in the control center, in the home favorites widgets, here in these tiles, you'll notice that the icons have all been shrunk in the individual tiles. So they went large and then back to small size here. And the view within the HomePod settings in Home Favorites is slightly different. So the icon up top is now translucent for HomePod. Same goes for the X icon. And down here, you no longer get this square border around the information. And the text to speech interface is now back to the thinner bars from beta one. For whatever reason, Apple is going back on several design changes. Now in the emoji search field, Apple has added a timeout function when selecting an emoji. As you can see that border, it disappears here. Previously, when holding an emoji, you had to select it in order to let go. So a welcome function. And of course, there's that new Apple Music icon, which reminds you of the old iOS 7 to iOS 8.3 days. Very nice, I, I do like it. And there's a new Apple Music widget look to go with it, same color, now a solid magenta, although I don't like this change as much. The dark mode changes don't apply to it, so it's always sticking out. And there are quite a few changes within the music application. So for one, you can now share Apple Music to Snapchat Stories, and you'll get a very similar pop-up here what you'd see on Instagram. Also in this beta, there's a new splash screen for music and friends, locating your friend's profile for sharing music and more. Also the color used throughout Apple Music is now a darker magenta, less pink, has more substance to it. This is a pronounced change in all of the system menus here. Also within music, clicking on the search icon and then clicking it again will now bring up the keyboard, so a very nice shortcut. Also within the search page here, you'll notice the results are slightly different. So dance has been removed, replaced with alternative, and hip hop has been removed, added to one of these smaller categories. And a very welcome feature taken from Spotify's playbook is to resume playback upon closing of Apple Music upon reopening it. Awesome, I've been waiting for this for quite some time. As you can see, your position is saved and the music itself on beta two it just resets to this. So thank you, Apple, for finally adding this one. Also, when haptic touching within Apple Music and then selecting on the search result, notice there's a new animation. It's much different, not so much a pop up, more like very subtle. So a lot less going on than in beta two. I quite like it actually. And then in here, you'll notice that these buttons are now not highlighted in magenta, so more subtle. Same goes for the more icon on the top right. Also within the library tab, you'll notice that the text is no longer highlighted in magenta and there are now icons to the left of all the categories. So actually going into those categories, you'll notice that every single one has a new icon here. Very nice. And Apple has done a ton of work to widgets in beta three here. Going to the widgets page, first off in the search results, you'll notice that the XL icon is now larger, easier to use. Going to the very bottom here, you'll notice there's now an edit icon like there was before. And if you go ahead and enter edit mode, and now on beta three, you'll notice that there's a new icon for customize. 
So this will edit your legacy widgets here. And those legacy widgets now have this darkened platter, which you can use to customize them instead of having to go into edit mode and then clicking edit mode right here. And the clock widget is finally here. So Apple showed this one originally when announcing iOS 14. Now you can add your own and there are three different types to choose from. So for your city, for world clock and a horizontal world clock like this with slightly more information. And the cool thing about this clock widget is that it'll actually change the coloring inside depending on the time of day. So after sunset, it changes to a dark interior. If I go back to current time, it goes back to white. Very cool detail. And Apple has also put in a lot of work on the screen time widgets. So the small version now is more condensed, shows more information and same goes for all the other views. This is the medium view, a lot more info, this sidebar here, and the larger view is a bit more condensed with better spacing on the bottom. And there are several new pop-ups for different functions in iOS 14. One is for refreshed widgets. So when you enter your widget view for the first time after updating, this is what you'll see, basically letting you know that jiggle mode is a thing and you can't edit your widgets using that. Also for editing the home screen, for this little navigation bar here, the dots basically tells you you can click on those to get into the app library view. If you go into app library, you get this description here, which says a new home for all your apps organized in smart categories. Quick summary. There's also a new size for smart stack, which is now available in the super massive size. Previously was not. There's also a super massive Siri suggestions widget size right here for shortcut suggestions double the information. Also a feature I missed from the last one, when adding two Siri suggestion shortcuts to the same page, even if they contain the same info, iOS will automatically select and choose different icons here. So as you can see in a moment there, you experience that switch and she'll give you different suggestions. The tips widget is now working for me and will actually suggest something useful instead of just these dots on beta two. And when selecting the stocks widget on beta three, symbol is now the first icon with watch list on the right. So you don't have to go to the very right to get to symbol. Also when deleting a screenshot in beta three, you'll get a different interface for it. So Apple brings it down to finger height right here, easier to click. Also that back tap accessibility feature where by tapping the back of your phone, you can do different things such as bring up the control center. This is now available for older phones such as the iPhone 8 plus. Also for older devices, 3D touch is temporarily disabled in this beta. So it will be coming back. It's now replaced by haptic touch. I hope Apple brings it back. Also, Apple has introduced a new mask look for Memojis in beta three. This one has a smooth look with a split seam. Previously, it was ridged. A couple changes in mail. Swiping right reveals a new color for the flag background icon. Also, when selecting multiple emails, well, now you can select them once again in iOS 14 beta three, where previously that was not an option. There's also a quickened animation when haptic touching on an email and then jumping in. So it now happens about twice as fast, once again. iOS 14 beta three now supports on-device translation. So this wasn't something new per se, but it now works entirely offline. A couple changes I missed from beta two in shortcuts. On the bottom, there's a starter shortcuts section here. Also, Apple has added a few new glyphs here when changing the icon namely in symbols, this stacked icon one. Also when using this Shazam shortcut, there's now this very pretty animation. So built in up top previously, nothing would really happen. And when you go into your control center and see the uh, usage of your microphone, it'll now specify music recognition instead of just a vague shortcuts app. Also when Shazam doesn't recognize the song, you'll get this new prompt interface up top instead of this centered one from before. And a number of changes to maps. So for one, maps will now ask you if you prefer walking and there's a preset setting for it. If you do select that, there's a new prompt for getting there safely, lets you know to pay attention to your surroundings and obey local laws. Also, you'll notice when navigating by public transport, the icons within the directions here are all condensed. Also when navigating using a bicycle, the little alert icons are now smaller and not as dark. An interesting change. <clears throat> also in maps, when haptic touching on the air quality index slash weather icon right here, you'll notice the icons are slightly larger and now the sun sits on the right side. So they've been somewhat mirrored here. In the clock app, when adding a new alarm, it'll now automatically populate the time area. So you don't have to click it to bring up the keyboard. In the weather app, current location is now called my location to clear up any confusion. When haptic touching on the photos app, if you have a screenshot in the preview, you'll notice it's now been shrunk, so it's not edge to edge. And when haptic touching an image in photos, there's now a new option to select 
it doesn't work, but it's new. Also, when pressing into that photo, there's now a new animation. It's also been shortened, similar to the male animation. Less movement happening and it jumps into it quicker. Within the share sheet, a couple new icons. So there's a new one for slideshow. It's now in a box instead of a circle and a new icon for create watch face with actual watch hands on the watch icon. And when editing photos in the crop and aspect ratio settings, here on the left, you'll notice new icons for mirroring, rotating, and new icons for aspect ratios. The view when haptic touching on a note is now much larger, reveals more of the note, no bottom bar here. In notes, when entering drawing mode, you'll now see grayed out icons up top where previously there was nothing and they'll become populated as soon as you begin drawing. In Apple News, there's a new splash screen detailing audio stories. Within Apple News itself, there are a few interface changes. So in the News Plus category here, the part detailing subscription, the description for it, and in the following page, there's interface changes here. As you can see the titling, search bar, and the sizing here. Upon opening books in Beta 3, you get this prompt that your collection has been renamed. And the actual view now just shows the current book you're reading instead of Recents 2. In Podcasts, there's a new icon for the Browse tab here. And when going into the notification settings here, you no longer have the options on the bottom to remove recommendations and new features. In podcast settings, some of the options are now highlighted in blue. In health, environmental sound levels is now headphone audio levels. So all reference to environmental has been replaced by headphones. And there are now new location-based reminders for hand washing in the health app. Also, for whatever reason, in YouTube, starting with this beta, you can now stream in 4K on iOS devices. And lastly, in phone settings, there's a new tab here for call blocking and identification and a new option for silencing junk callers. All right, guys, and there it is, iOS 14 beta 3. A ton of changes, ton of refinement here. Overall, beta 2 has been very good to me. I'm excited to begin using this on my personal device. We'll report if there are any issues, but so far, so good. I'm really liking where this is going. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.